Welcome to Flag and Banner's YouTube channel where we have a lot of how-to videos. This is our latest one on how to install a residential flagpole. We, are, we, we installed one a few years ago. Well, really, Grady, you and I installed one about 20 years ago, and it's still online too. So if you want to do a perspective of how much we've aged in the last 20 years, that might be fun to go look at. But this one is going to be better because we've done some really special stuff in it. So I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope it helps you. The first thing to do is to pick a spot and dig a hole. The depth of your hole is determined by the size of your pole and ground sleeve. For this install, we have a ground sleeve that measures 23.5 inches, so we dug a hole that is 24 inches deep. We also placed a bit of gravel on the bottom for drainage and to help level the sleeve. After pouring the gravel in the hole, insert your ground sleeve and check the level. You may find it useful to use wedges to help position the sleeve. These wedges will be removed before the final install. Be sure to also check the level of the inside of the sleeve. Next, you will need to add concrete to surround the ground sleeve in the hole. We added our concrete to the hole dry and let the earth add most of the moisture. As you pour the concrete, do your best to apply it evenly and avoid knocking your wedges out of place. After pouring in your concrete, once again check the level. At this point, if things look good, you can go ahead and remove your wedges and set them aside for further use later. With the wedges removed, finish filling the hole with concrete. After surrounding the ground sleeve with concrete, we added a little bit of water to the top and let it seep down into the hole. Next, you will need to assemble the pieces of your flagpole. The first thing to do is to install your cleat. This is where you will tie off your rope when the flag is on the pole. After installing your cleat, you can move on to the truck assembly. For this pole, we opted to use a revolving truck assembly that will allow the flag to spin with the wind. The assembly attaches to the top of the pole with set screws. Simply loosen the screws, slide it on the top of the pole, and then tighten it down. Next, you'll attach your rope. To help you thread the rope through the pulley, you can use a piece of painter's tape and attach it to the wheel. Once you pull the rope around, you can remove the tape. Once you have pulled your rope all the way through, it is time to tie your knot. I'll let Grady explain. Okay, so the flagpole rope, all the way up and all the way down, twice the length of the pole, then you'll tie the end of it. I just like to use a square knot with a half hitch on either end. So right over left, left over right, traditional square knot. Leave plenty of excess so that you can do a half hitch on either side to keep your square knot from coming loose later. That will not come undone. After tying your knot, you can attach your ornament. I would highly recommend going and looking at the ornaments we have. As long as you're gonna spend the money on the pole, you're never gonna to get to the top again. I would go ahead and look at some of the ornament options we have and pay a couple of hundred dollars more and get you a cute ornament. Isn't this gonna be great on our flagpole? Take a look. The ornament comes on a half-inch threaded rod that twists into the top of the pulley assembly. Simply thread in your ornament as far as it will go and then tighten the nut down to keep it in place. You can tighten by hand and then finish with one quarter turn of a wrench. For this install, we opted to use a flash collar to cover the bottom of our pole. Before moving the pole to the hole, we taped our flash collar up a few feet from the bottom to keep it out of the way until we needed it later. With all of the hardware in place, carefully walk the pole over to the hole. Have one person hold the bottom of the pole and guide it into the hole while the other person walks it into place. Once the pole is in the hole, try to get it as close to the middle as you can. This is a good time to grab your wedges from earlier to once again level the pole. 
Once you have sufficiently leveled your pole, you can begin to add sand to the inside of the ground sleeve to hold the pole in place. Once you have enough sand in the hole, you can pull your wedges out and check your level once more. With the wedges removed, continue to fill the hole with sand until it is full and tightly packed. At this point, we remove the tape from our flash collar and carefully slid it to the ground. Now that your pole is in the ground, you can install your snap hooks. For installation tips, I'll let Grady explain. All right, so we're gonna put on our snap hooks. I like to have my, my knot tied off when my flag is all the way up. I like my knot to be on the part of the rope that's wrapped around the cleat. I don't want my knot above the cleat when my flags are flying, which means I want my snap hooks on that part of the rope. I want them on the outside rope, not the rope closest to the pole. So I'm gonna pull the rope down until my knot is at the top on the inside. And then I'm gonna attach my snap hook by taking the outside rope, making it a loop, running it through the closed part of the snap hook and then back over the snap hook and then just pulling it tight. It's basically like a little slip knot. Then you'll pull it tight here and the tighter you pull it, the more snug it gets. So over time, as that gets wet and dry, that'll really get snug, but you'll still be able to adjust it if you want to put a different size flag on in the future. Okay, so we've got four snap hooks on, two for our top flag, two for our bottom flag. We're installing three by five foot flags. So we'll start with our three by five foot US. And the reason we're doing a three by five is because the length of the flag, five feet, should be a quarter length of your pole. And we have a 20 foot pole. All right, we're gonna adjust our ropes to get the slack right. You know, where we've got it straight here, no slack. We'll pull that tight. And then if we want to use our second flag, we've got that snap in position. And we can try another one. Make sure you get your flags right side up. I have put up flags with the star field on the bottom before, so make sure you Look at your flags and you have them, especially flags that have words like the Arkansas flag. And just another little educational thing about flags, most flags are called single reverse, which means they read correctly on one side and backwards on the other, but you subliminally read them correctly. It's an interesting little thing about flags. All right, let's see how that looks. That looks good, honey. Great. And there you go. That's how you can install an in-ground flagpole. All of the products used in today's tutorial can be found linked in the description below or at flagandbanner.com. For more flag flying tips and flag related tutorials, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.